So the session is recorded. And um, of course, you can catch up with this recording after the meeting or past recording on the playlist on YouTube. So if you visit YouTube and then search for FET Interactive Simulation, you'll find uh, this edition as, as well as all of the great speakers we've had, of course, and you can continue to catch up with the conversation um, asynchronously. But there is more. Um, sorry, just a second. I'm also going to mention the community on Facebook where the conversation, we, we only have about an hour and I'm sure for those who have joined repeatedly, you'd, note, you'd know that an hour is almost never enough to address all of the conversations we have here. So we take that to the group. So if you're not part of the community on Facebook already, I invite you to join and then you can ask your questions and get support um, by being a member of the group. I'm going to introduce our speaker in a bit, but before then, um, if you have questions, please use the question and answer feature here on Zoom. You can drop the questions in the chat. While, the, while our speaker today is making a presentation, we will save all the questions till she's done. Um, so you will not be able to ask while she's presenting. And after which we'll open up the floor, you can, of course, let us know if you'd like to speak directly to ask your question, or I'll be happy to read directly and then present them to our speaker today. As always, being the very special edition, I'd love to know where you are joining from. I, I know a couple of people are already writing in the chat. So please feel free to write where you're connecting from, your name, your country, um, you know, subject you teach, and one thing you're looking forward to in today's session. And my ask, and the most important ask would be, for next year, what would you love to see? Um, we've, of course, we've had amazing speakers and amazing conversation. Are there things you'd love to see? What do you want us to pay more attention to? What conversations have we missed out that you really would want us to have? Or if, if there's an amazing speaker as well, please feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll get to them in a bit. Now, I have the honor to introduce our very special speaker today. She is none other than Nafisa Bado. Um, she's an expert in inclusive education, but I would give her the honors. I'm, I'm, I can't do justice to all of the amazing work she's done. I'll, I'll give her the honors to just talk us through briefly before she starts her presentation, of course. Um, our work and some of the things she's done across the continent of Africa, ensuring that education, math and science across board is accessible to all in our irrespective of their learning needs. Welcome, Nafisa. We're super excited to have you today, and um, I'll hand the mic over to you now. Great. Thank you, and welcome, everybody. It's really great to be here, and I'm. this is actually my last um, kind of task for my role at Light for the World, and that was an, I think it's a great way to end it off because... Um, I really do believe that teachers are agents of change and that and science and, and, and biology were actually my favorite subjects at school. And one of the things that I feel really sad about in my work on the continent that often students with disabilities are excluded from these subjects. So when I met Rebecca and, and, um, and others, uh, when I read um, Rebecca and the team and at the MasterCard Foundation, um, at Tech Hub, it was really nice to hear about these wonderful simulations and how they are, can and will um, support inclusion. So I'm going to just try and share my screen quickly for you with you. Oopsie, let me just do it again. I just made a mistake. I will just share it one more time. Uh, there we go. And I'll share this with that and that. Okay. Are you able to see my screen, everyone? Yes, we see your screen. Fantastic. Okay, so um what <laughs> okay. So our objective for the session and what I thought I'd look at for today and, and discuss is the importance of recognizing that um student diversity. Um student diversity is not just about students with disabilities. But diversity is in with all, within all of us, right? Every person has a new, unique learning put, um, fingerprint and how they learn is different. So I think that that, that whole mind shift around diversity is something very important that needs to happen. Um, and the second thing we'll focus on is looking at universal design for learning. 
It's an exciting uh, methodology developed by COST, um, which I really, really um, ex I'm excited about and um, want to see more of it being practiced. There are many elements on your universal design for learning that are already being practiced on our continent and in classrooms. And I'm so certain that many of the fantastic teachers here are already doing that. Um, so um, so we'll, we'll look into that a little bit more. And then at, um, we will go into discovery mode around the FET simulations. I know that there's been a great work around trying to build in um, inclusive features and accessibility features within the FET simulations. So we'll have a bit of a look at that. And that's one of the things that really excited me and intrigued me about the, the work that you are doing. Um, yeah. So what I'll start off with is just to um, ask you this question. So I would think in maybe through the chat, you can also just um, provide um, your input. And the idea is that for today's session, there'll be points in the slides that I would ask some questions. And I really want to encourage you to unmute yourself um, or, or message in the chat. The chat might be a bit difficult for me. Um, I would really appreciate and any, uh, any help around that would be really welcome if you are able to do that. Um, I, I, I'm not sure. Um, uh, Olusalo, will you be able to? Olusalo, will you be able to do that? Yes, sure. So, I'll uh, bring you. I'll, I'll drop. I'll bring all the questions to your attention. Okay, fantastic. And then, um, yeah. So the first question I have is: What do people and icebergs have in common? So if you'd like to um, respond directly, it's the last one. So we're going to take a slightly different approach. If you'd love to respond, please raise your virtual hand and I'll just um, and, um, give you the permission to speak. Or you can write in the chat if you prefer. You I'll just... Perfect, yeah. With your end and I will just. Let's raise your hand. It'd be great to hear, um, yeah. Oh, it's a black thing obstructing the screen. Is it still there? Yes, I think it's still there. It just came up not long ago. Um, I think it's- Oh, wait, there. and now? Is it yeah, still the, now? It's the Zoom control. Okay. Yeah, it's gone now. The biggest one is gone. There's still a few, but then this is, okay. it's like- Any volunteers? Anyone would like to try? Yeah, this is very daunting, right? When you're online and you're not in a big classroom where you can just like look into someone's face and say, yes, I can see you kind of burning to tell me or you have an idea or been thinking about it. So we have Imam, Iman Mohammed. Iman, hello. Um, you have the permission to speak now. Hi, Imam. We don't, we don't hear you if you're speaking. You're still... Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi, we hear you. Hello, man. everyone. Please, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. can you Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Iman. We hear you good. Do you hear us? Oh, sorry. Hello? Um, please, please, please write in the chat. Um, I'm not sure you can hear us. Please, I can hear you now. Okay, please okay go continue. Okay, so I, I would like to try using the diagram on the screen. So when you look at the iceberg, I would, I would say that the, there is an, the, the, the inner part of it is not seen. However, it is giving a strong foundation to that particular iceberg. So in relation to a person, I would say that maybe uh, your, your, your inner development shows how strong you are going to put out as a product. Awesome. Thank you Thank for sharing. Thank you. Awesome. And do we have another one? Another person? Anyone wants to go? Okay, I'll give it. Okay, yeah, we have Paul Agada as well. Paul Thank you for volunteering. The mic, the floor is yours. Can you hear me now? Yes, we hear you good, Paul. 
Okay, good evening and welcome our speaker. Uh, from the diagram, what I can see there is more of uh, the effort we put in to make uh, things work are much, much larger than what is what appears to the public. You see that that part that appears to, let me say that appears to the public is little, whereas the one that is merged in the water is bigger and larger. From what I can interpret from that diagram, it shows that there are much, much effort you put to make things work, which people don't see. They only see the little. Of, of, of course, the success is just the little of the larger picture of the effort put in. That's <laughs> what so I can see there. Great. Thanks, Paul. Um, one last feedback. Um, I think there are two more comments in the chat. Um, thank you so much, Paul. And I will just read that out and then let you continue. Umberia, Caberia says, I think people are just, I think people just like icebergs hide themselves beneath something. Raphael says, an inner source of light that awaits the sparkle to rekindle it. So the iceberg, the larger part is the inner source of light. And then I, I guess the, the, the part above the water is the sparkle that could that would rekindle it. Victoria says there is great potential in Iman eating beneath beneath, just like the great part of the iceberg is eating underwater. Great potential is eating beneath, just like the iceberg. There's something covering the question. Um, so, so sorry, Samuel. The question is, what do people and icebergs have in common? What do people and icebergs have in common? Um, so we'll give the floor of the opportunity to Anthony again. I'll, then I'll hand the control over to you. Anthony, the floor is yours. OK, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yeah, I'm Anthony from Kenya, and uh, from the picture I'm seeing, uh, it means that what we give out uh, as uh, individuals normally is just a tip of so much that is uh, invested in us. Thank you. Great. So what we what we give out is a tip of so much more that is invested in us. Thank you for your feedback. I hand it over to Nafisa now. Yes. Thank you. Um, you know, I really like, I think we are in that festive season, spiritual phase, and I really love the answers and about, and I think a lot of things that came out was that this hidden, what is hidden behind the surface is either greater, more potential, and also, sadly, in a lot of places, in a lot of instances, people only show, don't show their true nature. The true nature of a person is often hidden below the surface but I love those thoughts about potential it's really inspiring because it's a whole different vibe and energy that I get here I love that um and that's the reality with lots of pe people and diversity we often do not know um what is the true challenges or strengths of a child or a student in our class right um, it might be hidden underneath the surface. It's our role as a teacher to kind of unlock that potential. And I think that's really important. And at the same time, sometimes someone's barriers or challenges are often hidden below the surface. And their true strength is not necessarily revealed. And, and that's what we as teachers need to do. Thank you for that. Oops, I'm just trying to move to the next slide. That is a bit harder. Okay, I know why. Let me just do that. Mm. Are you able? Is it able to move? Mm. Not yet. Okay. No. You know, I had this problem before, and that's why I was actually really, uh, I was thinking maybe it would have been better for you to, to show our slide deck because I've had this problem before. But don't worry, I can try and do it again. Um, stop sharing and then share again. Mm -hmm. You know, technology. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, it's not doing it again. Um, I'm just wondering, just to speed things up a bit, uh, Olusola, would you be able to share it rather? Uh, yes, I'm working on that now, and um, I'm going to bring it up in a second. Okay, sorry about that. I've I've had this challenge before, and I was trying different ways to to mitigate it, but it clearly hasn't worked. 
Okay, I'll move to the I'll I'll I'll, I'll um go to the next slide while we're in uh, in in discussion. So what I wanted to focus today on was to look at um what is universal design for learning. So I have a short little video to show. So please share the audio when we show that video. It really illustrates that how the idea of universal design for learning is that there's not a one size fits all approach, and that everybody has in new print. A, um, a unique learning style, learning abilities, and, and it also fluctuates in the day, right? Um, sometimes we are in the mood to just listen. Other times we want to we want to listen to something and draw or make diagrams. It also varies from person to person. So we have a lovely video to illustrate what is universal design for learning. Are you able to show it? Um, yes, I'm sharing my screen right away. Um, I should start with the, and the audio. Um, Okay, um, then so for me, um, so I'm actually legally blind, and many people, um, because my eyes had been in the early stage when I was a student looked normal, nothing you couldn't see that it was actually a challenge. Many teachers like didn't really understand that I had a visual impairment because it was un it went unnoticed and um for a long time, and I just thought everybody saw the way I did. So oh, let's go for it. So this is the video on universal design for learning. Imagine you went into a big clothes store and all that was on sale was one type of outfit in one size with no talk given to different individual body shapes or personalities. That would be crazy, right? Expecting everyone to be able to fit into the same size and express themselves in the same color and style? Yet in many cases, that's exactly what is happening in our education system. When it comes to learning, variability is the rule, not the exception, and our college campuses are now grappling with the demands of an increasingly diverse cohort of learners, with increasing numbers of international students, students from different cultural and socio-economic backgrounds, mature students, and students with disabilities. Despite this, curriculums are still designed for the mythical average learner, and all are expected to engage and learn on the same terms. Not enough flexibility is built in at the design stage to give all students equal opportunities to learn in ways that play to their own strengths. So, how can our institutions respond to these challenges? Enter Universal Design for Learning, or UDL for short. UDL is an educational framework that guides the design of learning goals, materials, methods and assessments, as well as the policies surrounding these curricular elements, with the diversity of learners in mind. The framework was developed by US organization CAST and is based on research in the field of neuroscience. It promotes three core principles for educators to build into their teaching practice, calling on them to provide students with multiple means of engagement, representation and action and expression. The framework includes a set of guidelines on how you can turn these principles into practice. For example, by fostering collaboration with the introduction of group work with clear goals, roles and responsibilities. By using different types of media to support learning and ensuring that all materials are accessible. And by providing a choice of assessment instruments while maintaining robust learning outcomes. You are probably already including some UDL elements in your practice without realising it, and there's much more to explore. So don't be afraid to let Universal Design for Learning give you a new lens through which to look at your teaching and learning practice and help you to better reach all of your students. For more information and resources, visit ahead.ie slash UDL. Thank you. So I hope that was, um, I hope you found that interesting. It'd be great to see in the chat if people have heard about Universal Design for Learning before, UDL, but it's really exciting. And one of the advocacy things that we in the sector have done is to, um, USAID has now made, has made it mandatory that all a teacher training that they invest in will embed universal design for learning and be used and that will be used for the framing of all training of teachers um in in, in USAID funded programs. So this is really exciting for for the for the disability sector but also for the sector around um making sure that all children can learn. 
So they have different pictures around you. Yeah, I'll just go back. There we go. So the, I always, in before in the past, I used to use this picture to illustrate what does um, equ um, equality, equity, and accessibility mean. And for the terms of universal design for learning, the last picture, the first, you'll see a picture of, of students watching a soccer match and all or saying the same level of a box. So the little, the person who is smallest cannot see across and appreciate the match. Um, on the second picture, you can see there are different um, boxes to, to, to make it easier for different students to watch or appreciate the, the soccer match. And that uh, across the fence, which is opaque. And um, that is often what people do in terms of special adaptations and what often is the thinking around inclusive education for students with disabilities is that we have to do that. But the last one is more around universal design for learning. Let's take away the opaque fence, make it possible, make replace it with something see-through where everybody is able to appreciate the, the soccer match regardless. So it's making things barrier-free, but also adapting uh, and, and making that starting from that starting point that we want to create a barrier-free learning experience and enrich learning experience for everyone. Next slide. You know, one of the things that I feel teachers, this universal design for learning really is, um, is, is, is a lot of the onus falls on teachers, but technology is also a very key and important um, um, tool to be able to facilitate and make easier the life of a teacher who is practicing universal design for learning. You know, Life for the World was in part of a big research study a while back around the costing, uh, costing equity um, research and then what is really required for teachers to be more inclusive. And they said that if a well remunerated, effective teacher who's, who's qualified is really a lot uh, in a supportive pro-inclusion environment is a lot more effective and impactful than in a um, high cost intervention. So teachers really play an important role in this universal design for learning and approach to making learning accessible for all students. Next slide. So let me talk about the three pillars around universal design for learning. In the video, we saw that the first pillar is engagement, the second one is representation, and the last one is action and expression. So when it comes to engagement, it's looking at the motivation around learning. Uh, um, why are we learning? We want to make learning interesting. And from um, making learning interesting, we want to keep learners' attention and also help them to take ownership of their own learning, right? If they understand what um, what uh, skill sets they need to acquire, and they understand what is necessary for mastery, it's really uh, uh, important that they know this and take charge of their learning. In terms of representation, it's making information accessible. Um, that means for someone who is maybe hearing impaired or visually impaired or has difficulty with dexterity or someone who has maybe challenges with language or understanding difficult com concepts, these are all important to that a teacher conveys a, a concept in a way or represents it in a way that it supports the students, um, all students to learn. So that means multiple ways need to be available for a student. And in terms of action expression, it looks at how we support a student to um, show what they've learned and help them in the executive function and planning skills around um, executing a task. So I just wanted to ask a question here. How do you, from the FET simulations that you've been using, how do you think it speaks to the, to the principles of UDL? We're really keen to hear from, from um, the teachers on, the, on, the, um, on our call. Okay, as always, um, did you get, can you can you repeat the question again, Afisa? So, how do you see the fit simulations um, support UDL or the also the te the the process that you are in as teachers contributing to universal design for learning? Okay, great. Um, if you'd like to respond, please type in the chat or just raise your virtual hand, and I will. Any ideas? How, of course, we, if not all, the majority of us, Matulito would like to speak. Hi, Matulito, the floor is yours. Hello. Hi. Greetings to everyone.
Um, Thank you very much. Sorry, we're, we're struggling to hear you. Do, do you do you mind writing in the chat, please, so that we can we can get what you want. We can, of course, we, we don't miss out on the contribution that you're giving. Please feel free to write in the chat, and I'll just read. Hello, out. can you hear me? Yes, we hear you now. Please go ahead. Okay. What about now? We lost you again. I see a lovely, um, a lovely um, message in the chat okay. that says about the FET simulation oh, support nice. engagement very well. They make learning active, inter uh, active and fun. And I also see the supports the major learning styles. Everyone benefits. I really like those two. Exactly. Those are fantastic answers. I'm sorry we couldn't hear you earlier. Um. That's exactly how I also see it. It does make learning fun and interesting. It also shows how it, how it works in real life application. So it helps students also pay attention. Um, and I think what is really like is that two students can also, um, there's also lots of ability to kind of manipulate some of the simulations, right? I, I remember watching one of them around force and how force is calculated. So when you when you can manipulate the simulations, you are also able to kind of get a, a good kind of um, sense around how things actually work, right? Um, you can also, there's lovely audio and descriptions and images, which really helps to represent a concept in many ways. So when a teacher is providing a, doing a lesson and there is a textbook already and notes, um, these simulations offer a different interactive way of um, representing the concept. I also like what I saw on the FET simulations. There's also an option to choose a language, right? I was really impressed to see Zulu on there and even Amharic. So that also helps that, um, that things are presented in different languages. And I will go a little bit more into the accessibility features as we move along. I see some messages in the chat. Um, would you mind, is it possible to read them a little bit small for me? Yeah, sure, I, I can do that. The first is, I think you read a few. I'll just go through. FET simulations makes learning more interesting. It captures engagement and motivation. You saw that FET simulations are apt in the practice of UDL and better still, if the teacher is able to use it in the manner it sends out the intended learning. Um, so that speaks to the role of the teacher in maximizing of the features as well. And Beria says, in terms of expression, the FET themes give learners an opportunity to showcase what they have learned, to showcase what they have learned. Paul says, FET simulation raises curiosity among learners and eases ease for teachers. Maka Baniso, apologies if I read that wrong, says, enhances learners' attention, provides a myriad way of expressing concept language, for instance. Zach says, FET simulation incorporates game-like features like challenges, levels, reward, rewards. These elements provide a sense of fun and achievement, motivating learners to pursue and push their understanding further. But Aliso, thank you for writing in the chat. And um, um, UDL reflects engagement just as FET scenes do. Learners are able to interact with scenes and explore. I really think that oh, you've captured it so well. And I also think that the idea of representing things in a picture, image, or in a diff or an experimental way also kind of provides inspiration for students to show their learning in different ways. I think a teacher seeing a lot of these simulations, and I wish I had them when I was studying um, physics, um, really um, helps also to, to engage with the concept a lot more and relate it to the real life experience. Um, yeah, there are. It's it's a really differentiated learning experience the student has. Next slide, please. So, you know, there are obviously when we have universal design for learning really supports learning and diversity, but there are always situations and things that you have to bear in mind for students who have different learning uh, challenges or disabilities. So I thought I'll just go through some of them quickly. 
So someone who has a sensory with a visual challenge have, might have difficulty perceiving the visual content. So then they would need something that's a, a voice or output alternative to the visuals to me, for, for what is there visually. So a description is often a useful audio description and also something, an audio description to explain um, what, the, what is also written or like a read out is also quite helpful. When someone has a hearing challenge, um, it's also useful to have some sort of captioning to kind of, or a um, a script to ex if there is an explanation, um, and also some alternatives to audio. And I think because the 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 Sims are so strong visually and you can manipulate it, I think it really also supports students very well who have a hearing challenge. In terms of physical, uh, and we'll talk about it later on when I talk, when we go through the inclusive features, if someone has a problem with a muscular or a, a dexterity or manipulating a computer or, 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 it, uh, or, or an object, the simulations provide somehow an easier um, in an easier 2D experience, but at the same time, there are ways that a simulation can interact with a keyboard or a joystick for someone who is using a different assistive device that will help that, that other than um, a, other than a mouse or moving their mouse around. Um, yeah. In terms of cognitive challenges, often we have a pro, um, students with cognitive challenges often have difficulty processing information. So they need multiple modes of uh, ways of stimuli of of representing an, a topic or concept and also has to be clutter free. So these are some of the things that support um, students with various disabilities. Next slide. So I thought we'll just do a bit of a guess here. What percentage of visually impaired adults are now using everyday accessible devices such as smartphones instead of specialized assistive technology? Well, I'll just, um, we can do a bit of a, a quiz quickly. It'd be great to hear people's answers. You can either write the, the, the percentage, which would probably be a bit easier, or the selection A, B, or C, or D. So please feel free to write in the chat um, if it's A, 27%, B, 56%, C, 87%, or D, 66%. What percentage of visually impaired adults are now using everyday accessible devices such as smartphones instead of specialized assistive technologies? Charia says A, thank you for mm -hmm. your response. 27%, Adinda C. says C, 87%, wow. Nura says A, 27%, Kristen says A, Lucian no. says C. Everyone is saying, oh, Paul says no idea. <laughs> yeah, I saw that one. We have our first B56 from Matsaliso. Yeah. So, so I think C is... <laughs> A, okay. A, A is leading more like 27. Yeah. So the actual answer is C, 87%. Interesting. Yeah. And there's actually a very interesting study in Kenya done recently in 2019 that said that students who had uh, feature phones, um, at about 31% of them were using it to access the curriculum, but this number increased to 71% were using it in their day-to-day -day studies when they were when they had a smartphone. So technology is really playing an important role, and this mundane everyday technologies are becoming um, really helpful in, in, in the learning and teaching process. And I think a lot of you already know this. So this is really an amazing thing. And something that I and our in our in our work at Life for the World we've been taking advantage of in a project that we are doing in Burkina Faso that um that if you are ever on the UNESCO ICT competency framework um webs portal you will find um, some of the open education resources linked to that next slide. Um, the next sorry, slide. sorry, enough. You saw, uh, you're you're breaking a bit now. Uh, you, please feel free to turn off your video. Okay, Nafisa, I'll do you're that. Broken. Okay, next slide. Thanks. Nafisa, we lost you. We lost you for some seconds. Please feel free to turn off your video if that improves the experience. Okay, so is it better? To, you can move to the next slide. Do you hear? Did you hear me? 
I was I suggesting had... um so that we can so that you're audible. Please feel free to turn off your video if that would improve the experience. Um, I did. Okay. There you go. Please go ahead. So I want you to take a moment to explore some of the the to explore your device. What features on your device can promote universal design for learning and accessibility? On your smartphone, have you ever um it would be have you ever looked at the if you go to the settings feature, you can find a um a tab that says accessibility. If you have an Apple that on it's using accessibility. And in there, you will find a set of features. Next slide. Can we go to the next slide? And some sure. of these accessibility features, why I'm focusing on Apple iOS, because I saw that the fit sims really are more, more for iOS, right? Um, and so that's why I, I'm I'm fo focusing on that. But I know that, but just to let you know that Android has the same features, especially if they are stock Android. Not all Android phones are the same, but stock Android phones such as Samsung, which um, they will have um, all of these features as well. VoiceOver is one of them. It's a screen reader that is used to navigate your phone and you use gestures like, um, moving things, um, two taps to, to select, um, swipe forward to, to, to um, navigate past different um, selections. There's also a zoom feature, color filter, so you can also improve the contrast. There's also a switch control, which makes it possible for your phone to interact with hardware, such as a keyboard or a joystick if you have motor skill issues, and also assistive touch that is also helpful for someone who, um, who has dexterity issues and wants to like, um, uh, shorten or uh, um, customize the shortcut keys. Next slide. So a lot of so basically to be able to in, use these accessibility features that are already built in devices, a, a, a simulation has to be coded in a particular way. And many of the fit um, um, sims have accessibility features. And these accessibility features are like alternative input, which allows for you to, like I said, use maybe a keyboard and do you shortcut keys to navigate um, either arrows up or arrows down. Then it also has sound and sonification, which also helps to, this is a, a feature that given sound effects kind of is more intriguing and engaging for a student. Um, interactive descriptions, give descriptions that are, um, that give a more a, a better experience for someone who is using a screen reader. Um, there's also zoom in and zoom out, which you can use either command plus or, com or command um, minus or control plus or control minus. There's also voicing, which is very helpful for someone who has a visual difficulty, interactive highlights, and also camera input, which allows you to basically engage with the simulation um, using uh, your camera, uh, opening up your camera. And all of these lovely accessibility features can be found in the link. I think you put it in the chat earlier, right? Um, yes. yes, I did. Yes, then fantastic, uh, Olusola. Um, so the, those, those features are all there. And all of these features have lovely little videos explaining them in a lot of detail and how to also get to them. Next slide. Um, I'd be curious to hear if anybody have heard, used some of the accessibility inclusive features already. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, again, interactive session today. Has anyone used any of the inclusive features built into the scene? Or to what degree are you aware? Is this the first time you are learning about these things or, or like no idea? We just love to know. Have you used any of the intera built in interactive features? What? Pan and Zoom, voicing, alternative nope. compute. No problem mm. if they haven't yet. I think this is part of the exciting session, right? So we can introduce people to them. So yeah, I'm gonna yeah. we're going to switch over and just show a bit of a short video that explains some of these accessibility features or inclusion features. That's inclusive features. 
provide new ways to experience and to customize your experience of a FET simulation. To find all FET simulations with inclusive features on the FET website, go to the Simulation Filter page. Then, in the sidebar, select Access and Inclusion. Many sims have multiple features. To narrow your search, select the feature or features you need and the list will show you all simulations with the selected feature or features. You can also find links to simulations with features still under development on our prototypes page. These simulations may have features in varying states of FET's quality. The assurance process. They may be enabled by default and can be disabled. Voicing, interactive highlights, and camera input need to be intentionally enabled through the preference. This is menu. Voicing on. Or using query parameters. Some features, including voicing and sound and sonification, have customizable options built into the Sims Preferences menu. Sim voicing options. Choose details you want voiced as you interact. FET continues to expand how FET simulations can be customized to support different learner needs and contexts. Check back for new features, as well as new Sims with these features. Check out our other videos detailing our inclusive features, features that flex and adapt FET simulations to meet many needs. Thank you, Olusola. I think that's also, so it, this is the idea, right? To introduce people to these amazing, fantastic features. Um, and then yeah, I see a question in there, I think, um, about the Sims and official language in the DRC. I, did, um, I remember all of the Sims are also in French, right, Olusola, when I looked at it? Yes, they are available in French. They are also this. And I think that's also a really lovely feature because that makes it all inclusive as well. So these features, obviously, when it was really difficult to see the video now, but I think if people have a moment to just engage with them and afterwards, you can watch that video again. It really requires you to actually select the different features. So what else, if we can go back again, um, there's also one feature that allows for interactive descriptions, a bit shorter than video, and I'll just show you one of these, and then we could have a little bit Bet. of a Interactive a simulations. Inclusive features. Interactive Description The Interactive Description feature provides an interactive described experience when you use screen reader software. Open the sim while using screen reader software and read, navigate, and interact using the same methods you use on any other web page. Some gold 3 chloride solute. Solution is not saturated and is slightly concentrated. The screen reader automatically announces descriptions of the current state as you navigate. Foot on rug, leg swing, slider. Then, as you take action and make changes, descriptions of relevant changes are delivered in real time as they happen. Foot on rug, foot on rug, foot on rug. Electrons on body, 34. Hand pointing at upper door, close to doorknob, hand close to doorknob, hand very close to doorknob, hand just above doorknob. You always have an up-to-date description of the current state to skim and scan as you need to. John has zero charges on his body. John has hand just above doorknob, and he is ready to swing his leg to rub his foot on the rug. The descriptions will let you know if you need to do something special, like press space or enter to grab an object. Look for grab button to play. Once grabbed, use keyboard shortcuts to move balloon. Space to release. Yellow, grabbed. At center of play area. Has no more negative charges than positive charges. Press W, A, S, or the key to move balloon. Space to release. Left. Your sweater. The interactive description feature can be reliably accessed using three screen reader and browser combinations. VoiceOver with the Safari browser on macOS devices, NVDA with the Firefox browser on Windows, and JAWS with the Chrome browser on Windows. Other combinations may or may not work well. For some simulations, interactive description can be accessed using mobile VoiceOver on iOS devices such as iPads and iPhones. 
just look for the mobile description icon. The interactive description is not provided visually in the simulation. The description is embedded in the simulation and delivered in parallel with the visual experience. To view the descriptions, you can use the Alley View tool, which is linked in the Teacher Tips document found on the simulation page under the Teaching Resources section. The blue column on the right dynamically displays current state description that screen reader users can navigate and review. On the left, the orange box displays the changes that are announced as a screen reader user interacts and makes changes. Also under Teaching Resources, you can find a video detailing the interactive description feature in a specific simulation. Check out our other videos on how to find and use inclusive features, features that flex and adapt FET simulations to meet many needs. Thank you, Olusola. Yeah, so I'm, 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 like I said, these features are fantastic. They're exciting. Um, there are lots of little videos for all the different features explaining them. You can also use the filter system to find these features. And what is also, however, necessary is that people know how to use um, voiceover and talkback and all and NVDA and all of these other um, lovely screen reading tools. And so what I did now is I put a, a, a little link in the chat about um, some of the resources we've developed around um, how to use um, voice over, well, voice over and talk back. Um, that's in the chat there, because you do need a little bit of guidance and support um, to help a student who is visually impaired to actually um, activate and use these features. It's much easier if they already know how to use um, a, a, the screen reading software. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping that through this through today's um, session, you'd be intrigued and curious about learning more about these accessibility features and allow students with visual impairment or other disabilities to learn science in your classrooms, because I think that is one of the things that make me the saddest is the fact that on our continent, we do not we do not um, include students with disabilities in these subjects, and it really is a sad, it's really quite sad um, con considering that science and STEM subjects I think is um, is one of the ways we can secure a better future for our continent and for people in the uh, as, as individuals that they have an orientation and understanding of the world um, through science. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. For, thank you so much for, for the great presentation, Nafisa. Um, we are hard pressed for time. Um, we have about five more minutes and it's in our culture to respect everyone's time. I know we have questions. So please, if you have questions, I don't see anyone in the Q&A section now. I'll advise that you write or just raise your virtual hand. We might be able to take about two, but not more than three questions. And then we will just, um, of course, wrap it up for the year and then of course look forward to starting the year on a great foot while we wait for the questions to come in um i i have i have a few questions uh, fixed uh, and I, I hope we can take it a, a lot more as well um we we know teachers have a role to play like to be able to effectively like just like you rightly suffered like well remunerated effective and qualified teachers are more important than any tool or any intervention designed to support learners who might have additional needs in the classroom. But um, for, for teachers, like we many of us are in, in on this call, uh, what do we increasingly need to pay attention to? Do, do you also, um, what, do you th what do you think is the attitude of teachers to being able to perhaps pay attention and see and be intentional about looking perhaps underneath the, the iceberg to be able to understand what the needs of a learner is and then being able to effectively support that. Yeah, I think just the fact that teachers are on this call now and it's late in the evening just already is an indication of the dedication, yeah. And, you know, I know that lots of often teachers who are dedicated sometimes get ousted out of their school because like, it's like, um, and it's a terrible thing to say. People say, oh, there's a show of teacher that thinks they know better. Like, I know there's this negativity around being an excellent teacher in some in some settings, which is not. And it's, this is a really sad thing. So I would always say to so teachers, it's always good. Sorry. So it's good to surround yourself 
Um, we lost Nafis. I'll just give her some few seconds. I'm sure she will. It might just be. Okay, maybe I put the video off. I think it's really important to surround yourself by um by other teachers who are similar in and as motivated and dedicated to the profession. When it comes to identifying students, I think it's always important to build relationships with students and to get to know them. And one of the things that I always encourage is for teachers in, in fish in large classes also to ask students in the beginning of the year to tell the tell about themselves. What are their interests? What do they love learning about? What are their learning styles? And I think that you can ask key questions and ask students to present themselves um, is one way of getting to know your classroom better and also being very vulnerable about your own learning style and, and your own barriers or challenges will help students also to share more about theirs. But like I said, as a, mot as a teacher, it's good to find your tribe and, and surround yourself by positive people, uh, especially when it's not easy to motivate yourself. And then also to get to know students and give them an opportunity to share more about themselves and learn about and, and make it a structural thing in your classroom at the beginning of the year. I don't know if I am, if it's, if we've lost everyone. Let me just find the pet simulation link. Could someone unmute and let me know if they are hearing? Okay, I can hear you. Um, I wonder if Olu Solo, Sola is now, uh, I'm not sure if he's still here. Um, I see a hand raised. Would you like to, you can just unmute. Hi, Nafisa, so sorry. Um, I got kicked out of the room, but. Do you hear me, Nafisa? Can you just um, gesture or say thin? Yes, I can hear you. All good. Okay, great. Apologies, everyone. Got kicked out, and I'm I'm happy to be back. Um, yeah. Um. Unfortunately, we we have we we're, we're on top of the hour, and um, as much as we'd love to take more questions, we also want to respect everyone's time, and um, I think I would just um we we should end on this note and then take the conversation into the group. But feel free if you have questions or if if you want to connect to Nafisa, um, you can you can either write directly to Ross or just. Of course, um, if, if there's any way, how, how can they find you, Nafisa? Are you on social media? If anyone would like to connect and then um, learn more about the work or just um, reach out, um, is there anybody can reach out to you? Um, yeah, so, uh, yes, yeah. I just put my email in the chat. Um, like I mentioned before, I'm, I will be starting a new venture next year. And so I put my private email in there and also um, you can also reach out to me on LinkedIn. Oh, and LinkedIn, I also, yeah. I mean, um, also... Uh, Olusola, will you also add the um, inclusive features link again for people? Because people were asking for that. It would be great. Um, sure. And I really want to say thank you for, for taking the time to, to, to join the call. And um, students with disabilities have untapped potential. It's, it's, I think teachers have a great role to play to un unlock that and, um, and take up that challenge. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nafisa. It was great having you, and um, we we wish you the very best on your on your next adventure. Um, that you on your on, on your new venture kicking off next year. Thank you once again, everyone, for joining the final edition of the Africa Share and Discuss webinar. Um, we hope that you've enjoyed joining us every month for this conversation. If there are things you would love to see next year, please feel free to reach out to us, and then. We will be, of course, happy to consider as we plan and then bring you amazing conversation and speakers again next year. Um, as we end, I would particularly want to wish everyone an amazing end to the year and then the very best of 2024. Thank you for joining today. And then we'll see you again in January, same time on the same link. Thank you and see you next year. Bye for now.